Log Entry 2387, Galactic Standard Time. Professor Crick's Brightscale, Department Head of Advanced Xenobiology, Galactic Academy of Sciences, Wing 7. Computer, add personal notation. I still can't believe what I witnessed today. The implications for our understanding of Class 12 Death Worlders. Well, let me start from the beginning. The crystalline spires of the Galactic Academy of Xenobiology pierce the lavender sky of Nexus Prime their iridescent surfaces catching the light of three setting suns, the most prestigious institution in seven spiral arms, where the brightest minds from over 10,000 species came to study the mysteries of life across the cosmos. And here I was, about to conduct what should have been a routine practical examination. Ha! Huh. Routine. That word has lost all meaning since we started accepting students from that peculiar death world they call Earth. I adjusted my sensory membranes, what humans might call straightening one's tie, as I glided into lecture hall alpha. The amphitheater-style chamber could accommodate species of all sizes, from the microscopic dust collective to the massive gas giant dwelling Jovians. Today's class was pleasantly average in size distribution, save for our lone human student. The examination chamber beyond the lecture hall's observation windows contained our pride and joy a fully mature nexus beast. Nine meters of rippling muscle, chitinous armor, and enough natural weapons to make a weapons dealer jealous. Classification, apex predator, threat level, extreme. Native to a world that makes most death worlds look like vacation resorts. Professor? The melodic tones of my teaching assistant, Zrill, interrupted my musings. The containment fields are at full strength, and the beast has been properly sedated for transfer. Shall I begin the student briefing? I waved a tentacle dismissively. No need, Zrill. This is a special class. They need to understand the gravity of what we're about to attempt. I activated my voice amplifier and addressed the gathered students. Distinguished scholars of the Advanced Xenobiology Program, today marks the culmination of your studies in predator behavioral patterns. The specimen before you represents the pinnacle of evolutionary arms races, a perfect killing machine honed by billions of years of competition. Your task is simple. Observe, analyze, and document its hunting patterns from the safety of our reinforced observation deck. The usual ripple of excitement passed through the class. Well, through most of them, those with biochemical markers for anxiety were already secreting stress hormones. All except the human, of course. Their bizarre biology still confound our best sensors. I must emphasize, I continued, that while our containment technologies are the finest in the galaxy, this is still an inherently dangerous procedure. The beast's natural abilities include... I ran through the standard safety briefing, noting with professional satisfaction the increasing signs of respectful fear from my students. Again, except for the human. If anything, they looked... Interested? No, that wasn't quite right. They looked like a technical analyst studying a particularly intriguing piece of machinery. Remember, I concluded, this is purely an observational exercise. Under no circumstances are you to attempt interaction with the specimen. The protective barriers are for your safety and the lights flickered. In my 17 cycles as a professor at the academy, I had never seen the lights flicker. Zrill, I said quietly, run a diagnostic on the containment fields. Already on it, Professor. There seems to be a power fluctuation in the main grid. Backup systems are... The lights flickered again. Longer this time. Failing to engage properly. That's when I heard it. The low growl that haunted the nightmares of apex predators across a thousand worlds. The sound of something that evolved to be at the top of every food chain it encountered. The Nexus beast was waking up. Too early. Far, far too early. Students, I said, fighting to keep my voice steady, please proceed calmly to the emergency exits. Our safety protocols. The lights went out completely this time. When they came back on three seconds later, the containment field was gone. And that's when things got interesting. Computer, mark that as end of opening segment. Begin new log entry for subsequent events. Computer, begin supplementary log entry. Background context for today's incident. Three standard months ago, Sarah Chen arrived on Nexus Prime. 
I remember the day clearly because it marked the first time in my career I had to reconfigure an entire laboratory for a Class 12 Death Worlder. Bureaucratic terminology that failed to capture just how unusual humans truly are. Your gravity compensators are unnecessary, she had said, waving off the expensive equipment we'd installed. Earth's gravity is only slightly higher than Nexus Prime's. I'll adapt, she smiled, that distinctive facial movement that humans use to indicate everything from pleasure to imminent violence, and added, besides, I prefer to stay in shape. The other students gave her a wide berth at first. Can't blame them, really. Most species evolve to avoid creatures that can survive conditions that would kill 99.9% .9 of known sentient life. The Floraxians would edge their root systems away whenever she passed. The vapor collective would condense into tighter formations. Even the usually unflappable silicoids would vibrate at a higher frequency, their version of nervous fidgeting. Professor, third student of the Quantum Collective, had asked during our first seminar, their quantum probability field fluctuating with concern, is it true that humans deliberately ingest neurotoxins for pleasure? Sarah had laughed, another of those confusing facial expressions. If you mean coffee, then yes. Would anyone like to try some? The entire class had recoiled in horror, but that was just the beginning of the peculiarities. During our module on environmental adaptation, she casually mentioned humans could survive with one-third of their blood volume. In the section on sensory systems, she revealed they could override their own pain responses through something called adrenaline. And during our study of predator-prey relationships, she shared stories of humans who kept apex predators from their homeworld as pets. The Academy's xenobiologists had been studying humanity's recent emergence onto the galactic stage with increasing fascination. A species that evolved on a planet trying to kill them in thousands of different ways. A world of extreme temperature variations, high gravity, deadly radiation, aggressive microorganisms, and some of the most dangerous predators in the known galaxy. But we're really quite friendly, Sarah would insist while casually demonstrating her species' ability to throw objects with enough precision to hit targets 50 meters away. A skill that made perfect sense for persistence hunters, but terrified most of her classmates. The Galactic Council had initially classified Earth as uninhabitable and humans as improbably evolved. Both assessments were technically correct. What they failed to account for was how these impossible conditions had forged something unprecedented a sentient species that didn't just survive in extreme conditions. They thrived in them. Are all humans like you? Zril had asked her once, after watching her repair a damaged servo lift by physically pushing it back into alignment, a task that would have required heavy machinery for most species. Oh no, she had replied, brushing off her hands. I'm actually kind of a nerd. You should meet our athletes. That statement had kept our xenobiology department awake for several cycles. But despite all the unease and scientific confusion, something unexpected happened over the past three months. Sarah Chen proved to be an exemplary student. Her observation skills were sharp, her analysis thorough, and her practical work impeccable. She even helped the methane breathers calibrate their environmental suits, demonstrating an intuitive understanding of pressure systems that surprised our engineering faculty. Your species is an evolutionary impossibility. I told her during one assessment. We get that a lot, she replied with another, one of those enigmatic smiles. But impossibility is just probability having a bad day. I should have paid more attention to that statement. Should have considered more carefully why she showed absolutely no fear when we announced the Nexus Beast practical examination. Should have wondered why she spent so much time studying the creature's joint structure and nerve cluster locations. But I was too caught up in maintaining proper academic protocols. Too focused on the standard safety procedures that had worked flawlessly for the past 50 cycles. Computer, mark background context complete. Begin emergency log entry for current situation. Computer, begin log entry. Assignment brief and initial observations. The amphitheater hummed with nervous energy during the practical examination briefing. Projected above the central podium, the holographic display showed detailed scans of our Nexus B specimen, all nine meters of apex evolutionary perfection. Your final assessment, I announced, my voice amplifier adjusted for a maximum gravitas, will test your understanding 
of predator psychology, environmental adaptation, and threat assessment. The Nexus Beast represents the pinnacle of natural selection's arms race. Your task is to document its hunting patterns, territorial behaviors, and threat display sequences from the safety of the observation deck. The Quantum Collective collapsed into their probability singularity, their version of holding their breath. The crystalline hive's lattice structure vibrated at their fear frequency. Even the usually stoic plasma entities ionized slightly more than usual. Sarah Chen, however, was taking notes, not panic scribbling like her classmates. No, she was methodically documenting joint articulation points, muscle anchor locations, and, most curiously, what appeared to be calculations of leverage ratios. The specimen, I continued, has been specifically selected for its size and aggression levels. This particular beast has successfully hunted on 17 different worlds, adapting its techniques to prey of varying sizes, defensive capabilities, and environmental conditions. A tendril of concern wrapped around my primary brain when I noticed Sarah sketching what looks suspiciously like grappling positions. As a safety precaution, the beast will be maintained under partial sedation. The containment fields are rated for Class 15 entities, far beyond even this creature's capabilities. Nevertheless, direct interaction is strictly forbidden. This is an observational exercise only. Professor Brightscale? Sarah's hand rose with that unsettling human smoothness. Question about the sedation protocol. Yes, student Chen. The dosage calculations. They're based on standard metabolic rates under normal conditions, correct? An interesting observation. Indeed, the beast biochemistry is well documented and the sedation formula has been proven effective in over 300 trials. But what about under stress conditions when adrenaline analogs kick in? I felt my secondary brain pulse with approval at her analytical thinking, while my primary brain wondered why she was smiling like that. An excellent point, student Chen. However, the containment systems are more than adequate to compensate for any metabolic fluctuations. She nodded, making another note. Was that a diagram of the beast's spinal nerve clusters? The briefing continued with standard emergency protocols, evacuation procedures, communication channels, the location of personal shield generators, utterly unnecessary given our security measures, but required by Academy insurance policies. Throughout it all, I noticed something peculiar about Sarah's behavior. While her classmates displayed species-appropriate stress responses, she exhibited signs that our xenopsychologists usually associated with anticipation. Finally, I concluded, remember that this specimen represents the ultimate product of evolutionary pressure, a perfect predator honed by billions of years of natural selection. Treat this opportunity with appropriate respect. Perfect is a strong word, Professor, Sarah commented, almost under her breath. Almost, but not quite. You disagree, student Chen? She looked up from her notes, and I witnessed something new in her expression, something that made my threat recognition ganglia tingle. Every predator has weaknesses, Professor. It's just a matter of finding them. She tapped her notes. Based on the joint structure, I'd say this one has at least seven. The silicoids nearest to her vibrated themselves three meters away. I should have recognized that look. Should have remembered reading about how humans used to hunt creatures larger than themselves on their death world. Should have paid more attention to those stories about human martial arts and their peculiar habit of practicing combat techniques for recreation. But who could have predicted what happened next? Who could have imagined that when the containment fields failed, when the beast broke free, when everyone else ran? Sarah Chen would grin. Computer, mark assignment briefing log complete. Begin emergency incident report. When the power failed, I witnessed 17 different species demonstrate their evolved panic responses simultaneously. The vapor collective condensed into emergency droplets. The crystalline hive shattered into their component escape crystals. The quantum collective split into parallel probability states, most of them screaming. But Sarah Chen, she stood up. The backup generators whined, struggling to restart. Emergency lights cast crimson shadows across the observation deck. Through the reinforced transparent barriers, we watched in horror as the sedation field flickered and died. The Nexus Beast's primary eyes opened first, all six of them. Then its secondary sensory clusters began pulsing, 
Its neural spines lifted, testing the air. Nine meters of apex predator, suddenly very much awake. Fascinating, Sarah muttered. It's already adapting to the artificial atmosphere. She was still taking notes. Student Chen, I extruded my emergency command tentacles. Evacuation protocols are in effect. You must. The beast's roar cut me off. The sound resonated at exactly the right frequency to shatter what remained of the crystalline hive's cohesion. Even my density-reinforced podium vibrated. That's when the containment field failed completely. The barrier designed to hold back a Class 15 entity, tested against the strongest known forces in the galaxy, flickered once and vanished. Later analysis would show a cascade failure in the power distribution network, but in that moment all I could think was, this is how a professor loses their tenure. The beast moved with impossible speed for its size. One moment it was in the center of the containment chamber, the next it was through the observation window. Transparent barrier fragments rained down like crystal tears. Its primary striking limb, equipped with enough natural weapons to make a military engineer jealous, swept across the front row of seats. Thankfully, most species' danger avoidance instincts had already cleared that area. Most species. Hey! Sarah's voice cut through the chaos. Over here, you over-evolved excuse for a science project. I watched in horror as my human student deliberately drew the beast's attention. All six primary eyes locked on her. Its neural spines flared. Secondary hunting limbs extended. Student Chen, do not... It's okay, Professor, she interrupted, still scribbling in her notes. Its joint structure is actually pretty inefficient. Classic example of evolutionary overspecialization. Watch this. The beast charged. Two tons of muscle, armor, and natural weapons, moving at speeds that would make most targeting computers give up and go home. Its primary striking limb, capable of punching through spacecraft hull plating, lashed out. Sarah sidestepped. Actually, that's not accurate. She moved with such precise timing and minimal motion that the beast's own momentum carried it past her. A textbook example of energy conservation. See that, she called out, somehow still maintaining her academic tone. The neural cluster controlling its primary striking limb has a response delay of approximately 0.3 seconds, probably an artifact of its size optimization. The beast roared again, this time adding its subsonic harassment frequencies. Three of my remaining students lost consciousness. Sarah just tilted her head. Interesting vocalization strategy, she commented, but the subsonic frequencies are actually interfering with its own equilibrium sensors. Poor evolutionary design choice, if you ask me. I watched all four of my hearts pounding as Sarah Chen, transfer student from Earth, self-proclaimed nerd, systematically cataloged our apex predator's weaknesses while dodging its increasingly furious attacks. The secondary hunting limbs have an impressive reach, she noted, ducking under a swipe that would have decapitated most beings. But the muscle arrangement creates a blind spot right here. She demonstrated her point by sliding into that blind spot, causing the beast to tangle its own limbs in confusion. The Nexus beast, terror of 17 worlds, started showing signs of frustration. Also, Sarah continued, now addressing the beast directly, whoever designed your nervous system really should have better protected your major nerve clusters. Having them right under these armor plates, she wrapped her knuckles on one of the beast's flank plates as she darted past. That's just asking for trouble. The beast's roar this time had a distinctly different tone. Was that uncertainty? Professor, Sarah called out, still moving with that unnatural precision. You might want to get everyone clear. This next part is going to be educational. I finally found my voice. Student Chen, this is completely outside acceptable academic procedures. She laughed actually laughed. Don't worry, Professor. Consider this a practical demonstration of applied xenobiology. Now, watch carefully, because this is where it gets interesting. Computer, I dictated weakly. Make special note, reviewing emergency response protocols regarding human students. Oh, and Professor, Sarah added as the beast reared up for another attack. You might want to record this next part. I think it'll make a great case study for next semester's class. Computer, begin emergency log. 
Physical Confrontation Analysis What happened next defied every xenobiological principle I've studied in my 200 cycles of academic research. Sarah Chen, barely reaching the height of the Nexus Beast secondary thorax, stepped into a fighting stance that made my threat assessment ganglia scream in recognition. Her body position showed both perfect defensive coverage and optimal striking potential. A predator's posture, if I've ever seen one. First demonstration, she announced as if conducting her own lecture, leverage principles applied to exoskeletal joint structures. The beast lunged. Sarah moved. My sensory membranes barely processed what happened next. She somehow slipped beneath the creature's primary striking limb, grabbed one of its secondary appendages, and redirected two tons of apex predator into a graceful arc that ended with a thunderous impact against the lecture hall floor. Notice, she called out to the few remaining conscious students, how the beast's high center of gravity actually works against it. That's the problem with evolving on a low-gravity world. The Nexus beast, clearly experiencing what humans call confusion, thrashed its neural spines in threat display. Sarah responded by darting between them, her movements precise and measured. Secondary demonstration, nerve cluster manipulation. Her hands struck several points along the beast's flank with surgical precision. The creature's right side suddenly went limp, its limbs twitching uselessly. The armor plates may be impressive, she lectured, dodging a retaliatory strike, but they create pressure points where nerve clusters bunch together. In engineering terms, we'd call this a critical design flaw. The beast roared in what I can only describe as indignant frustration. It deployed its toxic spines a defense mechanism that could neutralize small armies. Sarah's response? She laughed. Interesting choice. But the pneumatic deployment system has a reset time of approximately 2.3 seconds, creating a perfect opportunity for this. She moved in a blur of precise motion, somehow finding handholds on the beast's supposedly impenetrable armor. Before my neural cortex could process what was happening, she had maneuvered herself under the creature's back. Now pay attention to this next part. It's a classic example of how complex neural structures can be overwhelmed by simple pressure application. Her arms, those deceptively powerful human limbs, wrapped around the beast's primary neural stem in what she later called a rear naked choke. The creature thrashed, its massive form creating small earthquakes in the lecture hall. See how the beast's own struggle actually increases the effectiveness of the hold? That's because its autonomous nervous system is trying to compensate by redirecting blood flow, which actually accelerates the onset of the Nexus Beast, terror of 17 worlds, apex predator of the galaxy's most hostile environments, suddenly went limp. Sarah maintained her hold for exactly 4.8 seconds longer, a precision that impressed even my scientific mind before releasing. The beast collapsed, unconscious but breathing. Don't worry, she said, brushing off her hands. It'll wake up in about 10 minutes with nothing worse than a mild headache and possibly a bruised ego. She hopped down from the beast's unconscious form and pulled out her notes. Professor, I've documented several interesting observations about its defensive responses. Would you like me to prepare a detailed report? Also, I think I may have identified some potential improvements for the containment system. I stared at her all four of my hearts still racing. Student Chen, I managed to vocalize. Did you just submit a death worlder for peer review? Well, she replied with that distinctive human expression, what I now recognized as a grin. I wouldn't call it a formal peer review, more of a practical critique, though I suppose we could prepare a paper on comparative combat biomechanics. There are some fascinating implications for evolutionary development in high-gravity environments. The beast twitched in its sleep. Several of my remaining students fainted. Oh, Sarah added brightly, and I think I've solved that mystery about their hunting patterns on Nexus 7. They're not actually using their neural spines for sensory input during the final attack phase. They're using them for balance compensation. That's why the subsonic frequencies were interfering with their performance. Should I include that in my report? Computer, I dictated weakly. Make special note. Recommend immediate curriculum update regarding human physical capabilities. Also, perhaps a review of our classification of apex predators. Professor, Sarah was still taking notes. 
Do you think we could schedule another session? I have some theories about their tertiary nervous system that I'd like to test. The unconscious nexus beast gave what sounded suspiciously like a whimper. Computer and recording. And schedule an emergency faculty meeting. I believe we need to reconsider our definition of death worlder. Computer, begin final report, incident analysis, and academic implications. The emergency faculty meeting lasted six standard cycles, primarily because we had to keep pausing for various professors to finish expressing their emotional responses. The dean of xenobiology fainted three times. The head of evolutionary studies kept mumbling impossible in 17 different languages and the chair of galactic security wouldn't stop rocking back and forth in their hover pod. Sarah Chen's detailed report didn't help their mental states. As you can see from the force calculations, she explained projecting her combat analysis, the beast's natural weapons, while impressive, are actually quite predictable once you account for the neural delay. Really, it's a classic example of evolutionary overspecialization. The Academy's insurance adjusters were having existential crises. Student Chen, the dean finally managed, you wrestled an apex predator? Oh, not really wrestled, Sarah corrected. That was more of a mixed martial arts approach. Traditional wrestling would have been inefficient given the beast's multiple limbs. Though I suppose Greco-Roman techniques might work if you modified for the extra appendages. The security team assigned to guard her presentation kept inching away. News spread quickly through the galactic academic community. Within days, we received research proposals from over 300 institutions. The xenobiology department's messaging system crashed under the weight of interview requests. And our application rates from human students increased by 8,000%. The Nexus Beast, upon regaining consciousness, refused to eat for two days. When it finally did, it would only accept food if the delivery drone played soothing music. Our veterinary staff diagnosed it with what they termed post-human stress disorder. The fascinating thing, Sarah commented during her follow-up presentation, is how quickly it adapted its behavior. After just one demonstration of superior combat techniques, it showed immediate learning responses. I'd love to study this further, maybe with a larger sample size. The beast watching from its newly reinforced containment chamber actually whimpered. The academic implications were staggering. Every xenobiology textbook in the galaxy needed revision. The entire classification system for predator species required updating. And don't even get me started on the insurance policy modifications. We may need to reconsider our definition of apex, I suggested during the final review board. Perhaps add a footnote, except when humans are involved. Sarah's thesis, Comparative Analysis of Multi-Limbed Combat Techniques, A Human Perspective on Galactic Predator Efficiency, became the most downloaded paper in Academy history. The Quantum Collective had to allocate additional probability states just to handle the citation requests. But the most profound change was in the students' attitudes. The same beings who once fled from Sarah's presence now crowded around her in the cafeteria, eager to learn more about human martial arts. It's really just applied physics, she would explain, while demonstrating joint locks on willing volunteers. Anyone can learn it. Will anyone with the right number of limbs and a solid understanding of leverage principles? The Academy's Medical Bay reported a 300% increase in training-related injuries. Even the faculty's perception shifted dramatically. The same professors who once questioned allowing death worlders into academic institutions now fought over who would get human teaching assistance. Consider the research possibilities, they argued, a species that turns apex predators into case studies. Think of the grant funding. As for me, I had to completely restructure my advanced predator psychology course. Added a new unit. When your prey analyses, your hunting style, a post-human approach to predator-prey relationships. Sarah Chen graduated with highest honors, naturally. Her thesis defense involved another practical demonstration, this time with three Nexus beasts simultaneously. The recording became mandatory viewing for all new xenobiology students. The beasts now participate in therapy sessions twice a week. Computer, final notation. Perhaps we've been approaching this all wrong. We've spent centuries studying how environment shapes species. Maybe it's time we studied how species, one species in particular, reshape their environment. End report. Oh, professor? Sarah's voice carried across the newly reinforced lecture hall. 
about that research grant for the comparative study of human combat techniques versus space-dwelling leviathans. Computer Addendum also recommend immediate review of research safety protocols. No.